So this is going to be the first time that Blue Balls goes down a dirt road. Should be pretty interesting. I'm hanging out with this ginger ninja right here. Go, ch minutes, go check out JT. Jump on and subscribe. We are going to Fish Palm Bay. One little tip. The road to Headwaters is dust dusterson, dude. It's all this like sugar sandy kind of gravel stuff. And it isn't that bad to drive down with a truck, but always, always bring a cover if you like your boat. And put your rods and your rod lockers, dude. All that dust, even if you got a cover on the boat, it still creeps under the cover. It can get in your reels and stuff. Absolutely sucks. So always cover your boat. Here comes JT. I heard there are big bass here. There are giant bass here and I'm not waiting on you. <laughs> Bit of a circus, but that's why you show up at nine o'clock. And we found another one of my buddies. Hi, Asian Rob. <laughs> Rob does those epic shots on MLF that you always see, dude. But he cannot park. What? A rig. Look at that. He park parked this in when he got here. He parked this in, dude. So, so what's on the venue? What's going on? It's epic. Look who's here. I know, J JT's here. JT's. Here. There's Scott all Martin. these. All is Chris, Scott Martin is here? Chris is all Dane's here. Roland wow. Martin. That's Roland. All these fam well, Roland's always here. All these famous people. We're we're not at that that hashtag. What would that be? Like upper level. Hashtag pro bass. Hashtag pro bass fisherman. We're just a bunch of dirt bags trying to catch a fish. What he doesn't tell you is he caught a 12 pounder out here on a bed. Epic. Did I just see that shit go down right there? Hey, you think I'm a pimp? You for somehow you think I'm a bass pimp? My new buddy Mark just got Shiner delivery to the ramp. I mean, that is straight, but uh, you know, Front door service. your name is no longer Mark. It's Bass Pimp. <laughs> he is the Bass Pimp right there, my new buddy, Mark. I can't even use my map. So among all the bugs, this is what we're looking for. You see that little light spot right there? There's like a three, three and a half on there, but I think it's the male. So I think we're gonna leave him alone. Yeah, he's actually swimming towards us right now. But he's he's pretty locked on, but that, that female isn't on there. And what you're looking for is kind of like those little sandy, like orange spots, but two fish or three fish or threesomes, kind of nice. But you, you want the two fish on there. What I'll do is I'll actually stop like this. I saw the bed, saw the male on it, swung around, stopped. And sometimes if you watch for like three or four minutes, that female will show up. She got spooked. They're very like tweaky when they're like this. Um, but I don't think that one's happening yet, so we're going to keep looking. We're going to get in JT's boat and see if he can't uh, wrangle up this, this five, six pounder that we saw. Because I sure as hell can't catch her. Oh, that's naughty. She's got them thick hips. You know what I'm saying? I like them ladies with them thick hips this time of year. I got her. I got her. I thought I messed it up there a little bit, but I didn't. That's bed session 101 right there, boys. Oh, she came off. Dang on it. Well, I messed that up, but let me tell you exactly what happened. I'm an idiot. That's that's really how it went down. But if you guys kind of saw that, and, and even though I didn't land it, and I thought it was like a six pounder, and it was probably about eight and a half, but you know, whatever, that's okay. But what happened, it actually went perfect because I saw that fish earlier, I didn't even stop on it, right? I just like was like, ooh, <laughs> big girl. And went on, just went on by like a half hour ago. I came back and I knew where it was, so I eased up there and eased up there nice and slow. Jet, like she had no idea I was there. First pitch. I mean, she, doing. I mean, obviously, my my fishing expertise was not enough to handle her because I, in the end, she handled me. And I know that sounds weird, but hey, that's just how it went down. But that's exactly that was like 101 everything except me losing it right at the boat. That was perfect. And if you guys do that when you're sight fishing, you know, sight fishing is such a niche time of the year. But when it works, like that's how you do it. it was like when you first see a fish, don't just get all you know little little drummer boy all excited and try, like just to be like oh nice and just ease on by go on by her let her settle then you know exactly remember it's between those two sticks or like that one it was just off that little patch of grass to the south like you just remember that stuff and you ease back up there you'll catch way 
more of those fish. Or at least you'll fight them all the way to the boat and they come off like what I did. You know what CSS stands for? Stands for can't see shit. That's where I am right now. I'm in CSS. Can't see shit. I hope you guys at, at home can see the... Well, you, you might not even be at home. You might be sitting in your car ready to pick your kids up from daycare while you're watching this. I don't know where you are. Where do you look for some of these Florida beds? So there's a lot of different places. So you see how there's like a hole in the hydrilla? They can be in holes in the grass, you know, holes in submergent grass. They like eel grass because usually it's on a hard bottom. Hydrilla holes. Um, but the other thing that I oftentimes look for is some of that stocky grass. Those are pencil reeds, round reeds, cane. Because what will happen is that they'll actually bed either inside that stuff or on the little tips of it. And oftentimes if there's not hard bottom, they'll actually use the stalk, like the very base of the stalk of the grass, as sort of like a hard spot to lay their eggs and actually do their, their spawning deal. Another one to look at in a classic Florida piece of vegetation is arrowheads, or I think it's mother-in-law tongues, but basically they look like arrowheads. But all of those either indicate hard bottom or the stem provides a base for those bass to actually spawn on. One of the hardest things is telling how big these fish are. So JT found this one and down there and we, I mean, we've it looks seen, like it's this long. Yeah. But it, but if it's only this deep, it might only be this long. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. and if it's deeper than I think it is up there, then maybe she's this long. Like, I don't know. You don't know, you don't know what to you throw. Mean? We had one with me, Glenn Brown, and Val on Rodman, and I, I could have swore it was like a five, six pounder, and Glenn's like, yeah, it's a five, six pounder, dude. And Val broke it off, and then Glenn's like, yeah, let me dick around. He pitched it, dude, it was like, I think it came in at 11, like two on a boga grip, which, you know, is kind of way off, not like perfect, but yeah, talk about, it's easy to misjudge them. Well, so that's one of the things, like, I'm sitting here thinking right now, because between us, and her or him you never know let's let's not be let's not be judgmental here you know let's be inclusive between us and that fish there's a lot of what i like to call obstacles <laughs> and you know if anybody watched old brother where art thou they realize that there may be a lot of obstacles in our way so i'm sitting here trying to decide if i want to throw my fluorocarbon 20 pound fluorocarbon up there or if i want to just get some braid out because if she does bite well, I want to. I, I want to drag her through the obstacles, maybe over the obstacles. Anyway, I want to get her from her area into our area so we can show her to you. I knew that not, not her because I could see her, but my bait was moving. So what are you gonna do? You gonna pull back? You gonna hold on? Oh, I guess you can't hold on. Yeah, here at Headwaters, normally you would hold on to this fish, and maybe we'll confuse him a little bit by putting him right in that mat right there. He won't find his way back as quick. So, most of the time, if you catch the male off of it, then the female will start to guard a little harder, and maybe she will. And I want to get back in there as quick as I can, but I want to make sure that my bait's right. I don't want to have any kind of excuses. I'm hung in a piece of grass that's in the bed. It's even mattered shit. <laughs> That was actually, that was her swirling, dude. Oh, that yeah, wasn't no, a tilapia. Oh, God, she's losing her mind. Oh, I know. I will not want to go home to her tonight, dude. Uh-uh. There's no fucking way. Well, you know, I don't think we're going to catch that one. We wasted about a half hour on it. She actually bit it two or three times. I didn't capitalize. My capitalizing today on the bed fishing has not been very good, but there's definitely some starting to move up and some big ones. I, I've seen a lot of fish today, but I just didn't want to stop and mess with anything that wasn't, you know, what I felt like was a, you know, six pounder or bigger. So sometimes you just got to give up. It just, you know, you go put your give up pants, you can put your sweatpants on, just go lay on the couch. Just, just give up. Don't worry about anything. We're going to wrap this thing up. No dice. But we got to hang out with JT. Sometimes that's the way bed fishing works, though, right? Like, sometimes it, is. it just doesn't pan out. And, you know, we really thought today, like, we had had a little bit of a cold snap, you know, last week. And really thought, you know, like, three days ago it started really warming up. Yesterday it was hot. Today, like, dude, I'm sweating yeah. out here today. Like, so, like, everything lined up that they should have been laying on beds everywhere. And they just weren't. I mean, we found a few. We found a couple of big ones. But a but thousand it, tilapia. And a thousand <laughs> tilapia. But it just wasn't, you know, like, the, the bass fishing manuals clearly yeah. stated you know in chapter 7 verse 6 sub chapter e f that it would should have been everywhere and they weren't but that's how it is sometimes we did get to hook a few had one nice one kind of to the boat a giant yeah. it was pretty cool 
Maybe to the maybe. Yeah, I had I had equipment failure. It happens. That's what Miller Lights. Hey, for. my strang my strang broke. The strang broke. But he's my got a Miller Light liqueur. He'll be good to go. Sometimes you got to commit to it, and that's what we did. Like we literally, I think you had maybe one or two rods on your deck. Yeah. I had I had one rod on my deck, and the yeah. trolling motor was on high. But it is what it is. Hit that like and subscribe button, and go see my buddy the Ginger Ninja on his YouTube channel if you guys like headwaters fishing and heavy cover fishing. Hit that like and subscribe button though. We are out.